anyone else from my proposed that I still have some entries. <laughs> it's that time of year, as Darlene mentioned in the announcements, that we are right on the cusp of changing seasons. The weather outside hasn't quite gotten the memo yet. It's still pretty hot out there. But many of us are expecting changes in the next few weeks and months. Our daughter, Claire, who's 15 months old, attends a preschool daycare. And uh, this coming week, she moves from the infant nursery room into the one-year-old kindergarten room. And so even at her age, we have spent the past few weeks trying to get ready. We even had her very own school supply list that we had to go shopping for. For the 1K room, that means popsicle sticks, crayons, glue sticks, baby wipes, Lysol spray, and of course, Clorox wipes. I have to admit that I've had a few sentimental moments, or meltdowns as my husband likes to call them, as we get ready for this change. Because change means something new, it means something different. And change also means leaving something behind, that, that we are moving on from one thing to another. And for us, this is milestones in our daughter's life. Is there anyone else that's nervous or anxious about any upcoming transitions? You don't have to raise your hand. Is there anyone else that is looking ahead to the next few months, the next uh, season of life, and it brings up that sense of expectancy and anxiety and nervousness? Even if your family doesn't have younger children or older children, even if you're not connected to the school schedule, most people's lives seem to shift about this time of year. We move from summer back into more structure and discipline and routines. So how does it affect you, anticipating that these changes might be coming? Does it make you feel any differently about the last few days and weeks of summer, and you're trying to cram anything extra in before whatever might be next. A trip to the lake, a vacation, some extra shopping and trips, or time with family. Maybe it's not just seasons and school that are changing in your life. Perhaps the seasons you have coming up might be anticipating a new job or a move. It could be that you're anticipating retirement or expecting an addition to your family. Maybe you've already set those plans for next summer so that you have something long term to look forward to. We tend to be a people who look ahead and plan. We want to have an idea of what is coming next, a sense of purpose of what we are working towards. It's just part of our culture, part of our being, to want to be ready. And sometimes this sense of expectancy that we feel, the sense of anticipation, is good. It's about something that we're looking forward to, something positive that's exciting. And sometimes, it's not so good. Sometimes the anticipation is knowing that things aren't going to be easy for a little while, or that what's ahead we're not really sure about, or it's a little unclear. Maybe the expectancy is knowing that we are going to have to take a leap of faith, not knowing what might be next. And in both of these Cases when that anticipation is, is both exciting and when it can cause us to be a little uncertain, it brings up anxiety. Anxiety over waiting, 
anxiety over change, over lack of control, over patience, or maybe the lack thereof. Anxiety sneaks into all of our times of expectancy and anticipation. Our reading this morning from the Gospel of Luke speaks to another kind of anticipation. And it speaks to our anxiety, too. Jesus introduces spiritual anticipation. He was teaching about the return of the Son of Man. He addressed the expectations of that early church community. They had heard many things, many stories about what the coming of the Son of Man would be like. And Jesus, again, is trying to teach them, to address their anticipation about what this final judgment might be like. Their fears, their concerns, their uncertainty. If we're really honest, though, these words don't do a whole lot to calm our own anxieties, do they? It sounds more like a list of commands and instructions. Do not be afraid. Well, that's a lot easier said than done, especially in this context. Give away all of your possessions and give all. And then in the two parables that follow, we hear, be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be ready at all times. So at first response, this doesn't really sound like or feel like gospel good news. What does it mean? Be ready. Be prepared for the coming of the Son of Man. There's many voices and articles and theologians who have their own ideas about what that might be like. We get a sense of spiritual anticipation and spiritual anxiety when we hear these things. But the watchfulness and the readiness that Jesus referred to is less about anxious anticipation of judgment. It's not about the end of the world. That's the context he was addressing with those early followers. What Jesus is trying to teach them is that it's more about eagerness, excitement, anticipation and expectation of God coming into the world. But before we can get to the parables and some of these instructions, let's look back at how Jesus began this conversation. Do not be afraid, little flock. Do not be afraid, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This is the good news. This is the gospel promise that underlies everything that Jesus teaches about. God wants each of us, you and me and all of God's children, to have the kingdom. To have and enjoy and share the abundant life of being in relationship with God. To have and to experience and to feel the gifts of being in meaningful, sacred partnerships in community with the body of Christ. It is your Father's good pleasure. It delights God. It fills God with joy to give us the kingdom only for the sake that God wants to do it. That's how Jesus started his teaching. That's how we begin these instructions and commands and parables with wonderful words of promise and blessing. And 
And this foundation, this beginning, helps us to unlock the other parts of the lesson. For us to hear them and understand them and receive them as the good news also. If we let this promise of the kingdom, the promise of gifts and blessings and abundant life, if we let that seep down into the depths of our heart and down into the depths of our being, can the other things Jesus says make a little bit more sense? We can hear them with a little less anxiety and more with a sense of spiritual anticipation. Do not be afraid. It's a little bit easier to let go of our fear when we know that God is already with us. That the blessings are ours, not because of us, but because of who God is. Sell your possessions. It's a little bit easier to imagine letting go of all of our things when we know that God is providing abundance. <clears throat> Receive the kingdom, Jesus said. And let go of all of those things that distract you and take your priorities off of God. And watch, wait, and be prepared. Watch, wait, and be prepared for the blessings of the kingdom to break in in unexpected ways. The parables that Jesus told about the slaves waiting for their master to return, and the homeowner protecting his home, they were about planning and preparing for what comes next, just like we talked about as part of our own nature. Jesus describes what it means to be ready, what it means to live with anticipation. You see, those servants and slaves and homeowner didn't just sit around idly. They weren't just waiting around and letting someone else take care of all the work because the master was away. They continued going about their responsibilities. They had their task that they had to accomplish. And if they hadn't done this, the things would not be prepared when the master returned. It wasn't that they were sitting at the gates staring. It wasn't even necessarily that they were awake when he got there. Their waiting and watchfulness was about what they did in the meantime, being filled with the anticipation of what needed to be cared for being alert, and keeping the lamps lit, and then doing the things that needed to be done. So for us, living with a sense of spiritual anticipation means that we follow this example of the servants. We go about our tasks and our responsibilities. We go about our ministries and our calls. Caring for our families, attending to our neighbors, serving those around us, living our lives with a sense of mission and purpose. And while we're doing all of these things, we hear that promise that Jesus started with. The kingdom is yours. It's God's good pleasure to give it to you. So expect God to break in. Look for God to shine his light into the things that you're already doing. It means that while we might still be anxious as things are changing, and while we still have uncertainty and things that are completely out of our control, that sometimes those are the very ways God shows up to surprise us. We watch and prepare. Sure, we're going to stay busy, but we never lose sight of whose we are. That's how we can wait with this sense of spiritual anticipation. Because there is an ongoing intersection between what we are doing 
and what God is doing. They're always coming together, bringing about peace, calling us to share the love that we experience, allowing us to be filled with grace, teaching us to show mercy, and calling us to mission. Daily mission is going to look different for each one of us. Some days, for me, it's chasing our little girl around as fast as she can possibly keep up. Other days, for me, it's getting an email from Pastor Nathan inviting me to be with you today. Unexpected and surprising. The daily mission here might be wells for water. The mission here might be a fiesta, a partnership with Krista and Rick. It might be something that no one here can even imagine, and yet God comes knocking on your door. That's your identity here as the people of Zion. You each also have a mission individually and with your family. And watching and waiting and being prepared is to always be looking for where God is going to surprise you. We don't like surprises. We don't like change. We don't like uncertainty. And yet that's what Jesus says spiritual anticipation is all about. The kingdom the kingdom that God promises to give each of us in the waters of holy baptism is going to break in and surprise us. So when you think of all those upcoming things, seasons that might feel uncertain or might be exciting, when you think of changes in school schedules and family rhythms over the next few months, what might it look like if we heard the promise of the gospel this morning? The promise of the kingdom? And allow ourselves to be filled with a sense of certainty and strength and hope that comes not from our own planning, but from God breaking in. What are you waiting for? Go get your school supplies. It's still tax-free weekend. Go do your shopping. Keep saving in that 401k. Dust off all your cool weather clothing. We hope it's around the corner soon. Make plans. That's what we do. And fill yourself with spiritual anticipation. Be ready. God will surprise you. Amen.